I think my whole life I was searching for this. Restless wonder was the only thing that truly stayed constant to who I was. Hi, I'm Tori Delory, and this is Margot Ross Spiegelvan, and she is a 2015 Ram Pro Master, and we've been together for two years now. She has traveled so many places with me, but not to the West Coast yet. I am an East Coast fan lifer at the moment, which means I am basically always stealth camping. And if you've been following me for a while now, you know how much I love cities, which just makes that ever much so more complicated. And it was at first, but now it's pretty simple. Not to say I don't get anxious or finding spots or have difficulties, but I've just gotten really good at it and it almost feels natural at this point. My first stealth camping experience was in a Honda Accord in Miami, Florida five years ago. And now I'm in a camper van in New York City. So I've been doing this for about five years, starting as occasional road trips to living in my car for a month across America, and now I'm living in my van on the streets of New York City. So I'm making this video to help other people be able to start stealth camping too, no matter what vehicle you're in and no matter what your experience level is. So I am going to go into depth on every tip I have learned over the years in just a moment, but first, I wanted to explain what a typical day stealth camping in a big city looks like for me. So of course, I start off with all of the basic getting ready in the morning things. I take out the trash, went to the bathroom down the street, I have a Planet Fitness membership for showers, and I forgot to refill my water before going back in the city so I can't do dishes which is a struggle, but I'm refilling it tomorrow, so all will be well again soon. I took a very relaxing walk on the beach before getting to work for the day. I am a social media manager for Project Fan Life. That is how I fund being able to travel, but also it is really a passion of mine to be able to provide accessible education for people wanting to get into van life. That is why I love going to work every day because I'm so passionate about what we're doing. Right now, we're actually promoting our free virtual van life summit. It's going to be on February 17th to 19th if you're interested, and it's just really amazing as someone who loves helping provide van life education and make it accessible to everyone. This event is just really incredible. Um, I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested. So yeah, that's the part of my day that I actually do a lot of filming. I made a thumbnail for this video, responded to emails, planned a podcast, and now here we are. Hi. Um, let's talk about stealth camping, yeah? So let's start at the basics. How to look stealth. Can anyone even look stealth anymore? That's kind of this base question. There's a puppy. Puppy, come back. Anyway, back at it. Looking stealth. A lot of people actually say looking stealth isn't really a thing you can do anymore. And that's because just with like what I like to call the van life apocalypse of 2020 and just social media and van life, you know, coming hand in hand at this point. Um, a lot of people know what vans look like. And if you buy a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollar camper van and it has an awning on the side and solar panels and a Wi-Fi extender and all of those things, if you think you're stealth, you're just absolutely lying to yourself. Um, sometimes, or even in the beginning, I thought I was stealth with just solar panels and a max air fan. And at the end of the day, like I'm not, not only because my van is red, but just because it's not at this point, like people know. So instead of focusing on looking stealth, because for me, I didn't want flat solar panels. I wanted these, you know, the thick ones. And I obviously needed a max air fan. That was like, it's like, it's like a deal or no deal for everyone. So I knew I wanted those things. And so I knew I wasn't going to look stealth. And so instead, what I focus on is making the vehicle look like it's completely vacant at all times. Don't play loud music and don't let light bleed out. Anything that's going to draw attention to your vehicle. Um, don't grill food outside and with like an R awning out and your camping chairs. Um, just make it look like, okay, yeah, someone lives in that vehicle, but they're not living it in it in this spot right now. Something else that I've unfortunately been having to do this week is not putting my heater on. So I wake up freezing every morning because it is the middle of winter, um, but my heater, my, I have a Wabasto heater and it's very loud from the outside. And so it just draws attention. And so I don't put it on. And that's just, you know, it's a give and take. It's some sacrifices. This isn't always luxurious and that's just the reality. Um, but yeah, so anything that draws attention is a major no. But with that said, that is something when it comes to like the heater and when it comes to never turning your lights on and it's very much so a case by case situation i want to say when i was living at a walmart in vermont for six months i was so comfortable i was so comfortable it was like a 24-hour walmart no one cared i knew no one cared um i was in the back and no one was near me it was there was always camper vans there there was buses there there was you know so it's just 
it doesn't matter in that kind of situation as much. Like someone knows you're living in your vehicle. The only thing that I would try to avoid in that situation would be people knowing that I'm a solo female living in the vehicle. But on the flip side here in New York, it's very different. When it becomes dark at 4.30 in the afternoon, I want no one to know I'm in here at all whatsoever, at any cost. Um, it just feels wrong. My gut tells me not to let that happen. And that's, you know, at the end of the day, that is the, trust your gut, number one. I think that's the number one way to avoid a knock in New York City is make it look like no one is in the vehicle at the time. So my van, you can see from the outside, has solar panels and a fan and no windows. And you can see the window covers as well, which are up whenever I am parked. When it comes to building your van and thinking about stealth, you may look at going the route of flat solar panels, and that's definitely an option. Um, they don't perform as well as regular solar panels. So just make sure that that's a trade-off that you want to make. Something else you can do is figure out how to make your solar panels, your fans, etc., blend into your vehicle. So they look more like a ladder, making the vehicle itself look more like a work van. So let's go back to talking about blackout curtains, window covers, partition doors. Partition doors are like, I don't know why they're not like the golden rule in van life. They're safe, they stop light leaking out, they just if anything crashes they're gonna not let like, that thing hit you it's gonna hit the door instead they just seem like the ultimate best possible option to put in your van it should be like a no-brainer and i didn't really know that when i started and i didn't put one in but i will be putting one in my next van for sure no doubt so when it comes to diy window covers know that unless you're going to like really take your time and really perfect the seal they're not gonna be great I don't know anyone who loves their DIY window covers. Mine have a, have a giant section in the front where you can just see right through. They can see through. Everyone can see through. Um, and I just wish I had 900 bucks to spend on professional window covers. So if you do, go for it. If not, I recommend just taking more time on your DIY window covers and really perfecting the seal, the shape, etc. All right, so let's talk about how the more things you have on the outside, the more obvious it is that you are a camper van, right? Um, but there is also the option of adding something like a business magnet, like a dog washing company or a chemical vehicle like company is always like the go-to number one recommendation because who wants to break into a chemical van, right? Like not only do I not want what's in there, like it's dangerous. So it really would deter criminals in that way and make you look more stealth. Um, also to cops, we're gonna be like, oh, it's just a business van. So that's a great option as well. One common thing people do is they will put a hard hat or a work vest in the front of their vehicle. And that sounds great on paper, but whenever I think about it, I'm like, but my window covers are up, so who can even see that? So then it's picking between, do I want my window covers up or do I want the hard hat and the work vest and like the notes scribbled or whatever? And at the end of the day for me, it's like, I have like patches up here. I have a DeLorean over there because my last name's DeLore. Do you get it? Um, and it's just, if you see inside the van, it's not stealth, which if I had a partition door, it could be. So for me, it's like my window covers are gonna be up. So that, that doesn't really work for me, but that's something that if you don't wanna put window covers up, that's an option, that's a thing. I don't know, that's for me is like a common tip that I just don't agree with or understand. All right, so three ways you can stop light from coming out of your vehicle would be window covers, DIY ones aren't that great, I recommend professional if you have the money, and then a blackout curtain, and then finally a partition door would be the best option you could go with. All right, so let's talk about the actual spot itself. So number one, circulate in moving spots. Obviously that's gonna change whether you're stealth camping in a city or if you're in a national forest or if you're at a Walmart, whatever. Um, but when I lived in Vermont, Waterbury, Vermont, or when I lived in Salem, Massachusetts, um, what I would do since I worked there is I would have about six different spots that I knew of and that I went to and I would kind of rotate between those um, on a schedule and try not to be at the same ones every every day of the week, just kind of mixing it around so that I was never like, oh, that van is here every single day. Who is that? What are they doing? Um, so having just about five, six different spots that you can rotate between um, if you're living in one spot for a long time. And then depending on where you're stealth camping, this is gonna kind of change, but getting to a spot very late and then leaving very early. So it's kind of that, um, the rule where, you know, at the very end of the day, the last moment you can, you go to that spot, you go right to sleep, you wake up and then you leave. Um, that is so important. If you're at a residential area, if you're at a hospital, if you're any spot where your gut's kind of like, mm, I don't know if I'm going to get away with this, just as minimal time you can be there. On the other hand, for me, when it comes to like a Walmart, I'm like, once it's open, who cares if I'm here? Like, I don't, I can stay here all day. Like, 
Um, so for me, I guess that's kind of is like a little bit different, um, depending on one, how your gut is feeling to, um, the Walmart itself, what the situation is like and really base by base. So again, a hospital residential area, get in, get out, don't be seen a hotel. Those are spots that I really, like, they're my emergency. So a really important thing is if you're in a spot where your gut is saying, I don't know if I'm going to get away with this, or this is a spot where people might notice me and not like me being here. For example, a hotel, a residential area, a hospital, you should absolutely 100% do two things. One, be absolutely ready when you get there. Don't have to turn on any lights, make any noise, do anything. Your bed is ready. Everything is ready. You park, you put up your window covers, you get into bed, you go to sleep, you wake up and you drive and you leave. That is, I don't really, I tried those three areas. I try to be my last resort options for when I'm parking. Um, but when I do, I am there last minute and I'm gone in the morning. And that's something that if I'm at a Walmart or in this street here in New York, that doesn't really matter. So think about the situation and if that's applicable to that parking spot. But so again, when it comes to parking in a residential area, that is a last resort for me because just don't park in a, like a cul-de-sac or a small neighborhood because they all know each other and they're going to know your vehicle is weird and doesn't belong there. Um, if you are picking a neighborhood and that's kind of just what your last resort is for the night, um, obviously again, just getting up, um, early leaving right away. Um, but if there's an L, so you don't want to park in front of someone's house, like really don't do that. That's so sketchy. Um, you wouldn't feel comfortable if some random van parked in front of your house, right? So, um, if there's like a house here, I don't know how to do this. Um, like an L, you know what I mean? Like there's like a road like this and someone's house is here and there's a big long road here. That's like not really in front of someone's house park there park on like the L. Um, I feel like I'm, am I making sense? I feel like you know what I mean. Um, like the edge of a road where it's not in front of someone's house, but it's still in the neighborhood. Okay. Next tip, an obvious one. Don't draw attention to yourself. So for me, that means I usually can't even open my side door to cook. So I've actually had a really hard time eating lately. Um, but basically right now I'm in a perfect spot where I'm in the back of an alley and I actually can open my doors freely because people aren't walking back here and passing. Um, so that's incredible and it's really, really nice. Um, but if I'm parked even up farther on this road, people are going to walk past and look inside and it's going to be very uncomfortable and feel very unsafe. And then people know, oh, that's a solo female living in there by herself. I can come back and take advantage of that later. Oh, I see these valuables I could steal later. Even right now, if they want to take it at that moment. Um, so I don't open my side doors rarely. Um, it's very rare case by case basis, trusting my gut. Um, cause it feels like drawing attention to myself. So even when I'm exiting the vehicle, I never exit out of that door ever. It just is just a giant beacon. Um, but I, when I do exit out of this door, I actually will put as much distance between myself and the car as quickly as possible. I'll be as silent as possible. So people don't put, oh, this solo female and this camper van together. Um, I don't want that in any case. Another really popular one that I just actually the other one was like, I don't recommend it. This one is like, it's, it's idiocy. Like, please do not. I'm sorry if that was a little harsh. I'm sorry. Um, don't wear headphones to sleep. Oh my God, please don't do it. Okay. So I did it once and you know what happened? I got towed in my sleep. I mean, I didn't get completely towed. They left me off the ground and I woke up and I had to run to the front of the vehicle and start beating on the windows and be like, put me down. Um, and I slept through two people overdosing in that Walmart parking lot that night. Um, hashtag Chicago. Don't wear headphones, please. <laughs> please don't do it. Don't wear earplugs. I know it might be hard to sleep. Like yesterday morning, I woke up to construction noises and it was like, really? But no matter what, I don't put headphones on and I don't put earphones on and I don't blast music because I need to know what's happening around me, like safety. And I'm going to say this in the nicest way possible, but if you are a woman and you are watching males overlanding, stealth camping, just tips and advice, please also watch women's content because the way that I watch men stealth camp, I'm like, I would never do that. I would never cook with my door open. I would, I hear sometimes I hear men say things like, I don't know how you get lonely in van life when you can just open your door and you can talk to people. And I'm like, I would never open my door and talk to strangers. That's insane. I don't want to die today. Um, so just please watch, if you're a female, watch female content about stealth camping because it's not the same. And it's, it's so sad because even people are like, get a dog for safety. I'm like, if that dog has to go out to the bathroom at night, 
I don't feel safe getting out of my vehicle to take it. I don't feel comfortable. Even if I'm out camping at night, I'm not comfortable in the dark. And that's just me. And I know maybe people are going to comment and say things like, then you're not ready to be a van lifer. Or you're not like, you know, and that's not it. I just, I feel very safe in this box when it's locked up and all my extra safety precautions are in place. If I have to get out of this vehicle in the middle of the night, I'm not going to feel that way, even with a dog. And so I just really recommend talking to other female van lifers and stealth campers, etc., and talking about their experiences and listening to that and going off of that. But it's just not the same for females. It's just not. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry to myself because I would love to do that. I would love it. It's just not the world we live in, unfortunately. Um, so another thing would be a lot of people think when you pick a parking spot, you would want to pick a very dark spot where no one can see you. You're not drawing attention to yourself. But... Well, that does sound like it's a park. In my opinion, it's better to park underneath a light, underneath any video cameras you can find around people. Because if your people are, we witness a crime, if people can know they're going to be on video camera breaking into your vehicle, when you're actually driving around and looking for a spot to pick, um, you're obviously going to want to look for street signage, especially street cleaning. And you can Google parking restrictions. So in some cities, I actually went to a city was it in Ohio? I don't remember. A city where parking in your vehicle was illegal. And so I was going to Walmarts. I was going to Cabela's. I was going all these different places and there was just constantly no parking signs and like no, no overnight parking signs. And I eventually Googled it and it was illegal in that city to sleep in your car. So they're just party poopers. It felt like footloose, honestly. It was like they were trying to ruin my party. I was just trying to dance and live my best life. And they were like, not here. You will not, you will not dance. Um, so yeah. Actually, a really great way to save time ahead of time would be if you're going into a city, Googling their parking restrictions ahead of time. Um, and while you're on Google, Google the crime rates of that city. Figure out what areas are some of the worst areas. I grew up next to Reading, Pennsylvania, and I did not know my whole life that that was one of the biggest crime areas in America. And I would just go there. Like, I was Miss Greater Reading growing up, and that's when I learned that. And I was like, Oh my gosh, like I'm just casually strolling in one of the highest crime rates. And I didn't know that. So being able to know that and then avoiding those cities where they have really high crime rates, 10 out of 10. Also, you can use Google ahead of time to look up parking spots if you don't feel safe driving around and looking for one. So obviously you can use apps like iOverlander, even here in New York City. Um, but with that said, if you want to find your own parking spots, because sometimes those parking spots are either already packed with van lifers or they're just vans are always circulating through those spots. And so you don't necessarily want to be there and then have like, it's like a more like a residential kind of smaller area. Having camper vans constantly there will eventually lead to knocks, right? Like people are eventually going to be like, what's up with that? Um, so if you want to find your own spot and you just want to drive around and I, I could do that when I was in Boston, actually, I drove around and found a spot before nighttime hit. But here in New York, I don't want to drive around for nothing. Like, I'll lose my spot. It'll be majorly stressful. I could get in an accident. So instead, you can look up on Google Maps and do, like, an aerial view and find a parking spot ahead of time. Look at the area around you. Um, that's really great as well. Do you want to say people were saying how hard it would be to find a spot here in New York City? Um, I came here on a Tuesday night at 11 p.m. So don't come on the weekend. And don't come during, like, a holiday major tourist time. Um, if you do, like, you're in a van, you can come early, right? So come a few days early before tourists hit, um, and come at, like, the most traffic-free time. I found so many parking spots just driving around, and this is the perfect parking spot. I'm so happy with it, but there was just so many just driving down, even driving down that street there, like, it's just a long street, and there were so many on it, and so just come at an inconvenient time for everyone else, and you can have those parking spots. Also, if you're in a city and you can't find a spot, if you have a bike or a scooter or you can use public transportation, that is magical because then you can park farther away from the city center and that's great as well. So these two aren't necessarily stealth parking tips, but they are parking tips when picking an actual spot. Um, and I actually learned them both from Jared Tachi. He came onto my podcast, Van Life Unfiltered, which you should all listen to on Spotify and live every Wednesday night on Project Van Life. Um, so he came on and we were talking about stealth camping and he gave a lot of great advice. There is a podcast up on Spotify now of him talking about those things. Um, but two really great points he made was one, if you're parking on a hill, make sure your feet, you don't go to sleep with your feet above your head and then all the blood rushes to your head. And number two was if you're parking on a street at the very end, don't, if you can, if you can help it, don't park there and absolutely don't have your butt out where if a drunk driver or just a bad driver or a crazy driver comes around the corner, they would hit you. Not only is that depressing for your vehicle that you spend a lot of money and time on, your head is there. 
you are sleeping there. They could hit you and you could get serious brain damage or like an injury. Um, so think when you park about safety of your actual body and think about are a bunch of drunk drivers, am I next to a bar? Are there gonna be a bunch of drunk drivers here? Is this a busy street where people are trying to driving chaotically? Am I gonna get hit overnight? Like think about that when you pick a spot as well. Okay, so for my final point, I wanna talk about the knock and what happens if you get it. There are a lot of van lifers, a lot of really popular ones on Instagram and YouTube and whatnot, who will say things like, oh, I've never gotten the knock in my six years. And great for them, wonderful. Like round of applause for you. Um, I've had four and that is okay and it is valid. And I want to say that because when I talk to van lifers that are everyday van lifers or who are smaller content creators, um, they have knocks too. Like I literally just talked to someone who was like, oh yeah, I used to camp in San Diego and I got the knock all the time. And after my fourth knock, when I was watching all those videos of van lifers who were like, I never get the knock. I was like, I'm ruining van life for everyone because I'm getting the knock. In no situation was I ever causing a problem. It was, I was somewhere that was, I thought genuinely was going to be an okay spot and didn't end up being an okay spot. And then from that experience, after the knock, I learned and I said, all right, what can I do better next time? With the one where I was towed in the middle of the night, I did some research, I talked to some people and I learned about allstays.com where you can look up reviews of Walmart. Um, also, just parking near Chicago, let's not do that. I learned not to wear headphones in my sleep. Um, I learned a lot from that one situation. Another knock that I got was I left my car on for about 15, 20 minutes at this big open like grass area in Salem because my vehicle, I woke up that morning and I had no power and I needed to recharge enough to charge my phone so I could get directions to go somewhere. It is completely legal to um, idle your vehicle to charge batteries. And in Massachusetts, I looked it up, it is legal. But it is still scary for people when you are near a big open area like that um, what is happening in that vehicle? What is going on? You know, and so what I'm often thinking is from I'm often on my side of, of the view, right? I'm thinking to myself, oh, I'm scared of other people coming up to me, but people are looking at my giant van scared of me too, right? Like with these stereotypes of, you know, the big white candy van or whatever. So I learned to also think about how I'm perceived by others um, in my vehicle because that a mom actually had called and said and had wanted to check in and people were like, oh yeah, they could have thought you were overdosing. They could have thought you were a prostitute. They could have thought you were selling drugs. All you can do is learn and try your best, right? So you are watching videos right now on YouTube, trying to learn to get better. That is step one. That tells me that you are serious. You're not just going out there and partying and, you know, being that, you know, van lifer that's going to ruin it for people. Um, you're trying and that's valid. And so if you do get the knock, um, just learn from it and know it's going to be okay. And you can, you know, continue to learn and grow and from that space. And, and if I could leave you with any final note, it would be that I hope that even though I talk a lot about the negatives, that you get out there, if this is what you want to do and that you try it and that you find the confidence in yourself. I know it can be really scary and it can be a really big step to take. But when I think back on my life, like where would I be if I hadn't taken that first car camping trip in Miami, like, and just gone for it. And I mean, I've just grown so much. When I started out, I was in a Honda Accord and I didn't, at that time, I didn't know this was a thing people were doing. I didn't know I could research it or YouTube it. So you are already one step of beginner, ahead of beginner me, okay? Um, so I was sleeping on the back floor and I was covering myself with like a blanket and then clothes so it would not look like someone was sleeping there. <laughs> I was just making stuff up as I go. So you have now watched a video of someone who's been doing this for five years of stealth camping. So you are set. Um, it's everything that I know. So thank you so much for watching and supporting my channel. And I will try to answer as many questions as I can in the comment section. And if you haven't already, you can watch my vlog of what I do on a normal day stealth camping in New York City. And I'll see you next week or maybe earlier. I don't know. I'm kind of enjoying making these. We'll see. <laughs>